Hi everyone. Well, today I want to discuss the derailment of a BNSF train north of Pueblo, Colorado on I-25. This occurred on October 15th. By all accounts right now, it appears that there was a, a failure of the rail line itself, which caused uh, at least 30 cars on this roughly 130 car train carrying coal to basically plunge off the bridge and land on top of a tractor trailer that was going northbound on I-25 and killing its driver. This resulted in closure of I-25 in both the north and south lanes, which is a major artery, north-south artery in the state of Colorado. And that was a major disruption uh, to, for people traveling in the area. Well, I mean, this is a big deal, right? Thankfully, it's in the middle of the night, but I-25 is the heartbeat here of traffic up and down the uh, northbound, southbound areas in southern Colorado. So, so you can see there were significant detours involved during the lane closures. Now, the good news is a little over two months later, this bridge has been replaced. There was some initial confusion as to who was responsible for this bridge, whether it was Colorado DOT or BNSF. BNSF quickly came to the fore and said, no, this is our bridge. We're, spot, we're responsible for maintenance and inspection. And they're the ones that initiated the replacement of this bridge on an expedited basis. So the first order of business was to remove the debris associated with the derailment, remove all the coal, remove the damaged section of the bridge, get everything cleaned out, and then get, and then get the lanes open back up to traffic. Now I'm gonna read this statement that was issued by BNSF representatives. We understand that there are still questions related to the ownership of the bridge. We, along with Colorado DOT, continue to review documentation that dates back to the 1950s. I can confirm that BNSF does have responsibility for inspections and maintenance of the structure and will be replacing the bridge. So this bridge replacement occurred between the evening of December 18th and the morning of December 19th, and it's just been completed. Uh, this statement goes on. Our teams regularly conduct extensive track, bridge, rail, and weather event inspections across our network. BNSF routinely conducts a number of inspections to the track using a combination of rail detection testing, advanced track infrastructure testing, and visual inspections, including the most recent inspection that occurred on Sunday, October 15th, prior to the derailment. Now that's interesting. I wonder what would have prompted them to perform an inspection immediately prior to this derailment occurring? Was it a mere coincidence or was there some concern that arose ahead of time? So again, this ties into the theme that I've been covering on the channel here lately about just major issues with our infrastructure in this country, whether it's residential buildings, uh, sewer lines, various types of construction, bridges. A lot of the infrastructure that we depend on for our day-to-day -day lives is in danger of falling apart. In fact, over 40% of the bridges in the United States, these are the highway bridges, are considered to be structurally deficient or in poor condition. You know, I've done a number of projects for both DOT bridges and railroad bridges. And, uh, you know, if you think back to the period of Western expansion, the railroads were an integral part of that. In fact, 15 years ago, I was involved with a bridge replacement project and the existing bridge was constructed in the 1870s. So well over a hundred year old bridge. And, uh, you know, I think the railroad has their challenges just like the DOT to keep up with maintenance due to corrosion, due to heavy usage, cyclic loading. There's a number of challenges with essentially this privately owned railroad infrastructure. Now the contractor that was selected for this replacement work is Ames Construction. Full disclosure, I'm currently working on a couple of Ames Construction bridges right now. I had no idea they were involved with this bridge replacement project until I started doing the research for this Colorado story. Uh, this isn't sponsored, it's just coincidental, but I thought I'd mention that. Also too, I wanna to jump in real quick. I appreciate uh, the new channel members that have come on board. I really appreciate the support to the channel and it helps me continue to produce these videos at least weekly. So let's look at a few images of this replacement work. It's pretty amazing, really. You know, these contractors take on a tremendous amount of risk. Uh, usually just on routine highway projects, let alone emergency projects, there's what's called liquidated damages. So that they could be penalized tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for each day they are late 
past the scheduled date for completion of, of a bridge project. Now, sometimes there's money the other way. So there's uh, early incentive or bonus money if they get done sooner than that. But you can imagine that there was a lot of pressure to get this replacement done in the one evening that they actually did it. Obviously, they don't want to close the lanes during the day when traffic volumes are at their highest. So they closed traffic around 7 p.m. on December 18th and had everything wrapped up by December 16th. And when I say wrapped up, they had the fully assembled replacement bridge section off the alignment nearby. And once they closed the roadway north and southbound I-25 for safety reasons, they transported this bridge section and set it in place using a crane. And now the road's been opened back up to traffic since the morning of December 19th. So really uh, impressive project, tragic outcome. It killed the driver and caused major disruptions to traffic in the area. You know, this is on the heels of the closure of the Washington Bridge in Rhode Island. That's had major ripple effects in the community, given the extended commute times well beyond what people had been experiencing in their day-to-day -day lives. So unfortunately, this is likely to continue in the near future. There's been additional infrastructure spending brought to bear, but it's not nearly enough to keep ahead of these bridges that are reaching the end of their design life. You mentioned, uh, you saw in the BNSF statement that they referenced inspection reports going back to the 1950s. Just looking at this bridge, that's probably when it was constructed. So this bridge is approximately 70 years old or older. Now the official investigation will be conducted by the National Transportation Safety Board, and their investigations typically take 12 to 18 months or sometimes longer. So again, I've got a few questions, but early indications suggest that there was a problem with the rail itself. I'm curious about the timing of the most recent inspection, just perhaps hours before this derailment occurred. And so I'm sure NTSB will address that. In the meantime, it just bears keeping in mind how essentially fragile many of our bridges that we use day to day really are. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you haven't done so already, check out the link in the description to download your free copy of the top civil engineering disasters for the past 100 years.